Welcome to the Touching Into Presence podcast. This podcast is for people who are interested in body work, empowerment, and somatic based practices. I am Nikki Olson. I'm Andrew Rosenstock. We are certified Rolfers. Collectively, we're trained in various movement and bodywork therapies with an emphasis on somatic awareness and client resilience. Through conversations, our goal is to share and explore mind-body paradigms to offer empowerment possibilities. Today, we have a slightly different format for our show. We're back in conversation with Alesh from the European Guild about the documentary he recently released about structural integration. It's called Finding the Line, an Exploration of Structural Integration. The movie tells the story of an adventure that will take the viewers into Ida Rolf's world of structural integration. At the heart of the movie are eight students and their quest to understand Dr. Rolf's philosophy during their three-year basic trainings in Milano, Prague, and Warsaw. The movie also explains the basic ideas behind structural integration and discusses some recent research into connective tissue and fascia. It's a pretty great movie. I, I enjoyed watching it. We will link the Vimeo location for this award-winning documentary in the About section, and we'll also link the, the training that Alash mentions for the EGSI coming up. As always, if you like our show, please feel free to subscribe and to leave some positive reviews wherever you listen to our show. And you're always welcome to let others know about these talks. Sharing is caring, and it's actually one of the reasons we host these conversations. But enough for me. Let's get to this conversation. Hey, Alash. Hey. Hey, Nikki. Hey, hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. We wanted to uh, talk. Actually, I just realized this is nice. This is, will be your third time on uh, for us because you were on with John, the John Lodge oh, book yes. as well. Right. You're right. right. So you're you're our first, you know, third timer, and it's actually really nice <laughs> not not to have to do the beginning sort of. This is how we do stuff. We can just hop into it. Yeah. Um, Go and ahead. say, yeah, you know, here we're, we're today. We want to just um, do a little plug for this this movie that's come out. That, uh, as far as I understand, it's your baby. Uh, it's your your development. It's your idea. It's it's yes, it is my idea. It was my yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, I had a chance to watch it last night. Thanks to a sneak peek from, from you. And I appreciate that. It was great. Um, especially once I figured out how to have the, uh, closed captions, that was even better to understand the different languages. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, in all serious, uh, yeah, it, it was great. And I'm looking forward to, uh, uh, sharing, both it uh, via the link to people, but also you. And so I, I want to have you. Uh, do what we wanted to have you just talk a little bit about the, the 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 premise, the inspiration, and and just about the film in general. Okay. Um. The well, the idea came actually from from seeing how how students change during a basic training, especially if, if our basic training is over two years. So they make these incredible changes during that time. And um, I just wanted to document that once, you know, to really have them also speak and say something about how they how they perceived the, the work, you know, and how they perceived it at the beginning and the middle and towards the end. And in the beginning, of course, we just we just had an idea to do that. And we had a cameraman who was willing to go along with us for three years. Actually, it's usually it's two years, but COVID stretched it another year. And um, yeah, then we just started shooting and one thing came to the other. We had a lot of material and then we needed to turn the material in a movie, which was a project in itself again, as you can imagine. <laughs> Oh, that's such a great idea because it is true. I mean, this is a unique training in itself of just learning the work is pretty wonderful. And more often than not, individuals, they kind of change. And I re I remember in my basic training, um, Lil King, who is one of, my, one of my final teachers, just was speaking to that because it was a unique situation. And a lot of the people I graduated with, we did all this um, three phases together for the most part. Right. 
And, um, and because we, that was a time where you could get a dual certification. And so a lot of us had about a year between our phase two, phase three. So in a way we, it wasn't, um, it was more situational and not pandemic, but it took about a good two and a half years to do the training. And a lot of people were starting to express how things in their life really shifted for them. Partnerships kind of dissolved, not really out of you know, distaste for each other, but just like more of like there's the people changed and they wanted yeah. wanted different things in life. And yeah. um yeah, so Lail, I don't remember exactly how she said it, but it was it definitely caught our attention is that a lot of people are different from when they start to finish the training. Well and Usually people in the beginning, they, you know, they, they, they start doing this out of a personal experience, usually, you know, because they've, they've had some good changes in their lives, but they don't usually realize to, to what extent this, how, how deep this training can get, you know, they don't know that in the beginning thing. Um, they, they have, like Ida Rolf in some way says, it's, it's, uh, words do not describe the experience, you know. Words can remind you of the experience once you've had it, but you need to have the experience. And and it is in some ways it's really a trip over those over, over the time of the training. You know, and it's something it has ups and downs. It has it's it's an adventure. Yeah, I, I like also uh, you know without spoiling the film too much. Uh, yeah, I liked how um, you know Fulvio actually references one of my favorite uh, a painting that inspired me as a, a lot the uh, uh, treachery of uh, treachery is the the, the um, Magritte painting of the pipe yeah. and um and and then what you also just said about Ida's quote and I know she was influenced by Korbzybski yeah. uh and, but bringing in a little bit more of of that aspect I I really appreciated and what you're just sort of talking about as well I think what's really interesting and I I don't think it I don't think I it occurred to me when watching the film until being in discussion now is so many people talk about the work, uh, the product of the work. And this film is talking about the process leading to the product. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's really, um, I just think it's something that really special and to be uh, commended on. And that's probably why, partly why you've won a lot of awards so far for the, the film. So you're already getting commendations. Well, once we once we then in the end had the movie, the question was, what do you do with it? Um, and and instead of putting it, you know, on YouTube, um, which would have had the result that the usual people probably see it. Um, and usually people, I don't know if you've seen statistics about YouTube, but people who just watch a movie for free on YouTube very often you know, they they turn off after ten minutes, or then they they skip the next ten minutes and don't watch the in time. It's it's like a, it's a weird culture there. Uh, so we decided to do something completely different and and put it on by Mio that people who really want to see it have to pay ten bucks, and at the same time, uh, submit it to many 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 film festivals so that completely different people than the usual SI crowd get to see it. And and that was actually, and we didn't know whether this would work, of course, but it has turned out to be a very, very good move because by now it's been at 20 festivals and won seven awards for best documentary all around the world. So, um, you know, it's not the gigantic festivals. It's not, um, you know, it's not calm. It's, <laughs> but, but, well. Not yet, not yet. Not, not yet, well. You know, some some of it is also difficult. We, we submitted it to Sundance, you know, but Sundance this year, and you you don't realize this as a viewer, had sixteen thousand film submissions. Sixteen thousand. I mean, just imagine that. So there, we were in too much of a competition, and we didn't get in. But you well, know, yeah, you, you try instead of Sundance, you, you go for like moon moon jog. It's uh, <laughs> it's not quite a dance. It's not different different time of year, but it works. No, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. Uh, one one of the things related with that as well is like you know we're talking about other non SI people uh, watching, but also, and this is what you and I were actually talking a little bit in a relation with before. You know, 
people who have done different SI trainings in some way are also seeing about how, how your pro, how your school is, yeah. is doing it, which is also uh, very nice and very helpful. Um, you know, and it's actually something you and I have talked about outside of this is about, uh, and I'm very interested in, uh, so some, some people will take some rolfers I know will take the basic training two or three times, the advanced training two or three times, but they're staying in the same box somewhat. I mean, it's different by teachers, but to, to take uh, a training of a different school, uh, would, you know, and I, I do know some people who did study their, they did the basic with the MN at one point, and then they went to the Rolf Institute to get a, a different flavor. It doesn't happen the same way, but this is also something else that's spurred on in my mind about, um, you know, if we really want to learn this work and it's diverse a bit across, across the different, you know, small differences in the schools, being in another school or in relation with another school is just going to open more. You know, we, Nikki and I get the benefit of being in talks with other people, which really helps inform us. Sure, sure. That's just, that's just the, the icing on the cake. Well, I think, I think the movie shows, of course it shows people from our basic training, but I would imagine that you could, the gist, you know, the, the essence of what is being said will be similar in, in other schools as well. I mean, it's not, I can't imagine that it's going to be that different. No, no, but the difference between, and, and unfortunately our viewers won't be able to see this, but the difference, I'll try to explain it, like looking forward and looking one degree to the right is, is, is very similar, but different. I now have, you know, one degree slight that I didn't have before. Yeah. And so the, the similarities are great and we want those and then build upon them as well. Not that it's, oh, well, this, he said this, this is what it is, but it's it's another option. It's another avenue. Right. What I'm trying to say, Andrew, is that people who know about structural integration or who are practitioners will will probably note those minute differences. Someone who has no clue about structural integration will just get a general overview of what such a training could be yeah, like, regardless, totally. regardless totally. of what school you go to. And then that was important to me that that, you know, that possibility um, comes up. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was I was really heartened by one of the festival juries who, who where we won, I think, Best Documentary, who wrote to us, um, we really didn't know anything about this subject. And it was great to see a documentary about something we had no idea that it even exists. You know, usually you, when you have a documentary about something that you have some vague idea about, but there's people out there who have never heard of structural integration. Okay? And they see a movie about it and at least have some, you know, a general idea of what this is about. So from that point of view, it's worked really well. I so, think that's great. And I think, um, I'm a little, I think we're heading there, but um, talking a little bit more of who this is for and how, how people can see it. But what I really appreciated, and you know, in the beginning, we're kind of joking with me that I didn't figure out the closed caption. So I haven't gotten back to hear the, um, to hear it in the entirety of it um, in English. But what I really loved hearing was Ida's quote of that talk. I'm just going to read it real quick because I think this is important because so much, I think, rolfing or structural integration has become, it's, it's two things. It's known as like kind of fixing people's pain and getting them out of discomfort. And then there's this other idea of, yeah, how it does change them. But most, maybe this is just what I'm hearing, but people are like, oh, my gosh. I was crying and I don't know, I was crying. And it's kind of putting this slant that they're like entering in this like world of trauma. But I think it's important to kind of come to be reminded of Dr. Eiderolf's interest and her saying, I'm not interested in the relief of symptoms, either physical or mental. I'm interested in human potential and human potential per se, neither includes or excludes the palisation of symptoms. Right. And I think that's just, a, 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 it's all encompassing of like, yes, your some of your symptoms probably will go away, but it's also looking at like, how did that happen? What was the processes that happened for you to find a new alignment, find a new way of moving or 
just down regulating your nervous system so you can feel or whatever it may be and just still holding that question of how did it happen and that it was an exchange between the practitioner and the client and again I really love the the um the quote that rolfers are are um or sorry structural integrators are educators in the gravitational field as a therapist and maybe this was spoken about in the in the documentary but I would love to just kind of talk a little bit of, of more of that because it, I think it will go nicely on the previous conversation that we had with the philosopher who is all about metaphors and when I was hearing this particular philosopher talking about metaphors I kept on thinking about the metaphors that are within structural integration finding the line and have heard you know gravity's a therapist the things like that and I would just love to kind of hear a little bit more right. from you well, for what, me, what does for me the, the, the quote that she used, where she said, um, I'm not interested in palliation of symptoms, I'm interested in human potential. I think this is what fundamentally distinguishes structural integration from any other physical therapy. Um, we do not try and solve somebody else's problems. What we actually do is we organize the body and help it to become better aligned in gravity. And of course, in the back of our heads, we hope that this will help the people get rid of their problems. But it's, it's, it's an, it's an invitation to the other person's body mind to solve the problem by itself or by, by him or herself and not something that we do. So in some ways, I see ourselves more as midwives, you know, that, that, that allow something which is already there, a natural intelligence in the other person's body mind to emerge, which has been covered by all sorts of trauma or by habits or by, by, by just unconsciousness. And my personal experience is the less I focus in a 10 series on somebody's problems, but really just focus on getting a better alignment with gravity. in the end. I think if we ever lose this concept, then over time, structural integration is going to be, become nearly indistinguishable from other modalities. So that is an important part of, of what, what we teach here at the European Guild, and I hope this comes across in the movie as well. Yeah, I think so. You know, we always have this um, dilemma where we, we can have talks for an hour and we want to keep talking. Uh, and here there's a lot that we can talk about, and also the original intention was to maybe have a, have a shorter, uh, call just to, to, to bring this up. And my, my, my thought with that as well was one of the complaints we get sometimes is I want to listen more, but it's an hour. And my thought was, if we have a, a shorter, like 15, which has already gone over, but 15, 20 minute talk, it's a short enough that it'll actually hook people to get in. Um, yet in the process, I never want to just cut off because of a supposed idea of, well, we wanted to do this. And so I, you know, navigate between that and, you know, saying that um, I want to know if there's things that either, either of you do want to share with that. Um, one of the things I, I want to share just quickly is that um I like how this timing of the of the movie coming out aligns not exactly but roughly with a training that you're doing and so I like the fact that uh, it's not intended as an advertisement but wow what a great advertisement that we can you can show this and then we can also say hey there's also a training that that uh you know the European guild is is doing and one of the things I and I mentioned this to you on a Facebook post but one of the things I really enjoy about the 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 way that the European Guild, uh, at least this upcoming one, is set up is you have three different cities with three different teachers of no, three no, different no, countries. Not, not with three oh. different teachers. No, okay, no, that not. No, no, no. Okay, uh, good. Correct three me. Three different cities. It, it's some. It's, this is this is a program next year that we're offering. We usually teach. Um, 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 our program is usually over two years, like on extended weekends. And this is the first time that we're offering a, a program which is just in three large modules. 
so that anybody in the world can come because obviously you can't come to Europe once once a month for a weekend of, of two years. I mean, that's just too much flying and that's too much, you know. But you can maybe organize yourself to come three times for a month or for five weeks in each time. So, and we've picked three of the nicest uh, cities in Europe so that you can at the same time learn structural integration with uh, Nilsi Silveira and Uli Ferk. Um, Nilsi being an old time assistant, long time assistant of Emmett Hutchins and Uli Ferk having come from the Rolf Institute trained by Jan Sultan. So you will get the best of two worlds and you will get to know Europe and one of three of its most beautiful cities at the same time. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's thank it. you for thank you for correcting my numbers. And you also get you get this uh, the benefit of being being immersed among different cultures because your classmates will be Absolutely. from different cultures. Yeah. And what I what I what I found by accidentally working all over the globe is uh, the culture helps inform the structure. Uh, and so when we start to learn more about culture we get more access to how to work with people. And so it's, a, it's an, I, I would say an added bonus to the training you have going on. We didn't think of it that way originally, but, but I, I think you're absolutely right to getting to know different people from different countries and, you know, even different languages, even, even within Europe, you know, Southern Europe and Northern Europe are two different cups of tea and Eastern Europe is another completely different cup of tea. So yeah, and and the language will tie into the talk that we had just before with a professor of cognitive science because metaphors are about language, and it's true. Um, and I don't want to dive too much into it here, uh, but the uh, the language, uh, the it definitely it was Wittgenstein, uh, was sort of father of modern uh, philosophical languages. That you know, that basically the the language dictates how you see the world, and so absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's, it's great stuff. It's great. I just, like I said, in some of our messaging, I wanted to thank you for having the idea, taking the time, executing and, you know, bringing something more modern documentary wise for our work, because I think we really needed that. And a lot of, I think, videos that we see are just kind of old, the old time videos, which are great. But in this day and age where it's, you know, not as much of a, a task to create video. It's just nice that we have something a little bit more relevant right. because we still are, you know, a relatively small population and it Very small. will only Tiny. serve, I know, <laughs> will serve us that we are not also stuck in the dark ages that we know how to <laughs> get a film out. <laughs> yeah, so we have much to you to thank for that. <laughs> you're absolutely welcome in some ways although you know in some ways it's an old-fashioned movie it's a slow movie That's, you know, yeah you, to, you it's not this fast pace um video um thing for 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 a music company or something like that mm -hmm. you know not a music trailer it's it's a slow movie well, and, it's 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 not hollywood it's europe right well I mean, even old-fashioned Hollywood, you know, <laughs> they they used to be they used to be slower then too. So that, that's what I mean. It's 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 old-fashioned a little bit, but and and it may well be that this is one of the reasons why it sticks out in the festivals. You know, it's it's not the usual after two seconds you have a different frame type of thing. You know. Um, right. So, so it's a movie actually designed for the health of our nervous system. Crazy. In some ways, in some ways, you can. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you just have to sit down and watch it, and 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 go with it, or or you don't like it, and then you you just cut off. You know, and mm. it's too slow for you. That's okay. That's yeah, okay. I don't think anyone. I don't think anyone will have that. But I'm biased. I think it's great. I think you guys did a great job with it. And I'm excited to share it more. And I'm excited. We'll put a link for it in this, in the, in the liner notes for this, uh, which will hopefully be out a few weeks, if not earlier from when this goes live. Some people, some people have asked, why is it not for free? And nowadays everything is free, right? But of course, I mean, you know, a movie. Sure costs, yeah, it costs money. Quite a bit of money to yeah. make. I yeah. didn't know these things. You know, a, a, how, do you know how a low budget film is defined? A low budget. Probably under a million. No, no, it's not quite as bad as that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, low budget is per is two and a half thousand dollars per minute. 
Oh, yeah. It's a low budget film. Mm. So by the standards of the film industry, this is a no budget mm. film. <laughs> so, oh, it doesn't it doesn't look that way. It but doesn't look it's that a no budget film, but of course it still costs money. And and yeah. we're you know, we're trying to get at least some a little bit of it back through the selling it on by Neo and, and you know giving it out for festivals and stuff. And it it is a hurdle, you know, on on by Neo, the trailer has been watched nearly 1,500 times. Okay. And 10% of the people have paid 10 bucks to see it. Hmm. Okay. So 90% for them, the paywall is a uh, too high a hurdle. Hmm. But that's it's okay at the moment. You know, it'll be, it'll be, it's okay. Yeah. yeah it's a shame. I mean, it's, it's a bit of a shame because it's clearly, um, I mean, the quality is great. Uh, I, I do hear what you're saying as far as so much stuff is free nowadays, but also so much of what is free there's a reason it's free. Um, it's either not great quality or it's, it's being free because it's right. designed to hook you into something else. Right. Um, and that's, yeah, I, I didn't think your price was too high. I just happened to be lucky that you gave it to me for free. <laughs> well, the, the reason why it's also not for free, you can't go the festival route and have a free video. Mm. You can't put it on YouTube and send it to festivals at the same time. That doesn't make any sense for the right. festivals. You will never get there, you know. Right. So it'll just stay in the echo chamber of structural integration then and not get, get out into the world. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. And now it's been really in, I don't know, in so many countries all over the world. Even probably going to be in Dubai even so. You see. Yeah. We'll see if I can. We'll see when I'm there if it, it'll be there. But I don't go to movie theaters right now because I'm, you know, I don't want to be around people on COVID. But I'll, if it's outside, I'll stand in the desert watching it. Uh, well, as always, I, I appreciate our time, uh, and I'm looking forward to sharing this out uh, with people. As I mentioned, I've already sent a link to one friend who I think will get a lot out of the out of the um, the documentary, and uh, you know, but. We're both. Well, I don't want to speak for Nikki too much, but echoing what I've heard her say, we're both really glad that you've uh, you've done this. Okay. Well, it's been absolutely. Uh, I'm I'm always honored to be on your program. And oh, thank you. Doing this, and thank you for having me today and talking about finding the line and exploration of structural integration. Oh, yeah, it makes sense. We actually said the name once in the in the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, have you a, have to, you have to, you have to. On by me, you have to put the whole thing in. It's finding the line and exploration of, because there's other movies, all the movies. I saw that. I saw that. that. I was trying to find it. I, I, I was trying to find it. I couldn't because the I, I don't find the Vimeo app to be that that great um, for me, and I couldn't find it. Then luckily, the link you said loaded it into my library, and I said, okay, it's it, it's done. So I'll just send the link. It'll be easier. Yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. So well, have a great night out there. I hope the rest of your training for the Prague group goes well. Yeah. Thank you. And thank yeah. you for having me. Thank you, Nikki. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you.